five people in. We'll go ahead and kind of get started. And uh, what I'm going to try to do is go over in five different sections. We're going to just do basic preferences, what I like to use, how I like to use the software uh, when I first install it on a brand new computer. And then we're going to go into importing and kind of file management, some of the boring stuff. And those two are going to be pretty quick. Then we're going to get into packages, which is going to be a little bit longer section. Uh, and then templates, uh, which is going to be the longest, probably the most fun. And I'm also, if we have time, I'm going to throw in some stuff about um, using core edition for, I know uh, there's probably a few attendees that are coming over from, uh, that are using Darkroom Booth and they added core edition during the pandemic with virtual, uh, the virtual party and the virtual booth. So we're going to use some of what we know there and kind of expand on it. And also for our photographers that are not booth people, we're going to learn a little bit about what we can do to uh, set it up in a more photo booth style. So if we have time, we're going to get to, I'm going to try to squeeze it in. Um, and then uh, we're going to take a small break for quick questions and um, in between each section. And then we'll kind of move on. If there's too many questions, we'll handle after via email to support. And um, so we'll go ahead and get started with Core Edition. We'll go ahead and open it up. Log in. And I've tried to make it as uh, similar as uh, a first install as possible. Um, Core is designed to work in full screen. Fortunately, if I go full screen, it uh, because I have two monitors, it'll kind of throw it off. But I recommend you usually that you work, uh, click this button so it takes up the full screen. So the very first thing that I like to do is I like to see my file names. So I'm gonna go to view and uh, show file names. And now I can see those file names there. I'm gonna do the same thing, uh, or I'm gonna click show order do the same thing for my photo workshop. View, show file names. And then you'll notice that this order right here is opposite order from the photo library. So I always uh, go sort and then switch it to ascending just so they're in the same order or you can switch to photo library, whichever you, way order you like. Um, the next thing that I like to do is turn on my guides. Um, the uh, I have my uh, guides so I can see where each image is going to crop. And the reason why I like doing that instead of changing it to 8 by 10 so I know where 8 by 10 is going to crop is because if I adjust for an 8 by 10 and then I print a 4 by 6, I'll end up with a white line and I would never see it if I forgot to, uh, if I left it on eight by 10. So um, I always leave it on auto and uh, use my guides rather than the cropping um, or the preview there. And then show order. Okay. And those are the main uh, things that I do in the photo library and photo workshop. I'm going to switch over to the setup tab. Whoops, got the stuff already set up. Um, and I'm going to go to my workflow settings. And we have these two options right here that a lot of people, they don't know that they're there and they end up dealing with this, this issue. And I'll kind of show you the issue. Um, Studio catalogs. where if I add an eight by 10, it adds this white box instead of selecting the photo and putting it in there automatically. So if you check fill package with current photo and uh, for all three of these and then have add default package unchecked, um, that would be if you create a new catalog and you have a just a, a package waiting there to be filled and you have to delete it every time. Um, I log into people's computers and I see those all the time that they've for, uh, forgot or they've changed it and then don't go back and change it. And it's uh, and then they just live with it. 
Um, so those three, fill, uh, add default package unchecked and then fill package with current photo checked on all three of them. And that's my personal preference. Um, I'm gonna click on general settings because just like you saw, it prompt for uh, a number of copies. For some people that's helpful. I personally, if, uh, if I'm gonna print more than one copy, I just click the package number, uh, however, many, however many times I need to print. Now, if I'm doing an event that's specifically gonna have um, four or five people that are four or five prints for every uh, uh, image captured, then I might uh, turn that option back on. But typically I like to uncheck prompt for copies. Um, and that was that little calculator thing that you saw early, earlier whenever I clicked eight by 10. Okay. And those are the, all of the preferences that the first things that I do that, that I personally like. Next thing we'll kind of uh, do is connect a uh, camera. Now I'm right in the middle of moving, so I don't have any of my cameras with me, but I'm going to set up a hot folder camera. Um, and this is actually typically how I work because I use a wireless camera. Um, I send it to a folder and have Darkroom just automatically import it in. Um, but if you're using a directly tethered supported camera, let's say a Canon camera, you would just check that option, plug in your camera and then detect it. Um, so I am gonna select this guy right here and then next. And I have a folder on my desktop already set waiting for Darkroom. So uh, now whenever I drop an image into that folder, it'll automatically ingest into Darkroom. Similar to if I had taken a picture, um, it would come into Darkroom with a tethered uh, and supported camera. So uh, the next thing on the list would be adding a printer. And just like my cameras, they are at my other house. Um, so uh, I am going to add a Windows printer, but I I usually use a, uh, a DNP or a Fuji printer. Um, and that's just what I have, nothing against any of the other printers, they all work awesome. But if you have, let's say a DS40 like I do, you would just check this option, plug in the printer, and then um, it will detect the printer and you should be all set, ready to go. Uh, because it's not connected, nothing's detected. I am going to use just a Windows printer that goes to um, kind of a virtual printer just for, uh, just so we have some sort of output and then set it to allow all. So that right there is kind of the basic setup. At this point, Darkroom would be ready to go. You would just select your catalog and then start running. Did anybody have any questions before we move on to importing in catalogs? Or am I moving too fast? Or everybody good? I'm gonna go ahead and move on, but you can go ahead and ask a question. I think Wally's standing by to answer questions as we work through it. So um, in this section, what we're gonna kind of do is look at um, how we organize and then do a little bit of editing. And I'm gonna show you a couple um, uh, tricks as well. Um, so I'm going to create a new catalog and, um, this is something a lot of people will run into as well. They'll check this option right here thinking it's a button. You can see that it's checked. So now when you create a new photo catalog, it will, um, let me create one so you can see. It'll give you this little prompt right here each time. 
because that option is checked. So you, uh, if you see that over and over, every time you create a catalog and you don't like it, just click right here and uncheck that option. So there are a few ways that you can add photos. Um, first way, I'm gonna just grab some images from um, an import folder on my desktop. and click import all. At this point, I can rename them as I import them. There they go. And um, then I can, uh, I'll wanna rotate them. Now, if these were coming straight from a tethered camera, they would already be rotated. Uh, but you can also hold down your alt button and click the head of the image and it will automatically rotate. So that's just a little trick. Um, you can also select multiple images and then rotate them at one time. Um, so um, next thing we're gonna try doing is um, you can, uh, let's see, create a new catalog. You can also drag in images and it'll import them as well. And if you had these organized in subfolders, you can drag the folders in and those subfolders would become subcatalogs. So for people that are doing a lot of work in um, like maybe a software that's already organizing and outputting as subfolders for let's say schools or sports, um, you can just drag in that whole folder. Now, you can also access a folder of images on your desktop. These are in two different places. These are uh, have been imported and are located in a different folder versus these are the originals. Um, I would recommend using the um, catalog. Um, it's gonna create preview files and cache them and so the software will load and work much faster um, versus each time you go to a folder, it has to generate those files. And then some of the um, editable files, the EDFs and EDPs um, can also run some of the issues outside of catalogs. So uh, it's okay to, let's say, if you needed to print an image real quick and you just have it on, um, on your desktop like my wife will give me a, a picture and say, hey, can you print me a picture real quick? And then I just go to the folder without importing. And that's okay for uh, like onesies, twosies on images, but for your work images, they should be imported in this catalog. And, um, okay. So next we are gonna go to my list. Oh, proofs. So, I can take all of these images and uh, for seniors, this works out really well that you can, um, if you create pre proof books for seniors, you can run this real quick and then print out eight by 10 prints on your DX100 and then bind them up and then give them a, uh, a proof book so they can go through, uh, take their time with their family to uh, select the images they want. And that's something that I do. Um, so, uh, if you go under advanced options, you can change the layout. Let's say you want to have, um, that's too small. We'll go with four by five now, a little bit smaller wallets. So you get a little bit larger image. You can have the file names display underneath the image so you know what you're working with and they'll automatically adjust for the orientation of the photo. Um, you can go even further and I have a video at darkroomsupport.com um, uh, where you can use your own custom template and 
one of the things that I like to do is use, um, use this for proof envelopes where it has uh, images printed on it with the image number, a barcode, and then uh, it gives a chance uh, for a parent to look at it, decide what they want, hand me back a hard copy, and uh, we do our printing. And then by the end of the event, they're walking out, they can pick up their prints. Um, and then there's also a hard copy showing exactly what they ordered, but uh, they can actually see the images printed. Um, so, and I, I have a video for that at darkroomsupport.com and search proof, and it should pull it up. Um, so next we will go to, and we'll get into the packages a little bit later because we're gonna build our own. Um, these were all based off of a eight by 10 printer. Um, and uh, some people are still using eight by 10 printers, um, but uh, with event printing, we're moving a little bit more to the smaller size, like five by seven, eight, uh, six by eight, six by nine, and four by six. So um, we'll get back to this area in just a second. So let's say we had a, um, a little mark right here. Let's say it's a blemish. It's a blemish in the wall, but I am going to use my retouching tool. And you have this right here. You can retouch in, in Darkroom or you can retouch in Photoshop. I always use, leave this set to retouch in Darkroom because I use a different method for Photoshop. And I'll show you in just a second. But um, let's see how well we can do that here. Uh, it should ask me to uh, select a sample area. So I've gone through and, and I probably could have gone with a uh, little softer edge brush so it, it hides it a little better. But you can see there was a quick retouch um, and then save. So let's say I had, um, let's just use this image as an example. Let's say I wanted to retouch this in Photoshop. Instead of changing that option, what I do, this is a little bit odd, but um, I just drag straight into Photoshop and I have it on a different monitor. But I'm gonna just pull it over here and pull Photoshop over so you can see. So the image is now in Photoshop. Any retouch that I do here, I probably could have gone with a little lower res image. Okay, we're gonna let Photoshop do its thing and just act like it wants to act. But so um, if I, uh, what I was doing is an invert. So you would be able to see the, uh, the, uh, the change in Photoshop and then you just save it and it comes back into uh, darkroom with that retouch. It's just in this case, okay, there, let's see if it works now. you can see that it's actually Photoshop that's having the issue. And that's one of the nice things about Darkroom um, in editing. We're always working on a preview file. Um, so the changes that you make as you make them, you can work very quickly because we're not actually editing those pixels when it's editing. So uh, I'm gonna just save that file. And now um, whenever I reselect that image, did it say, oh, whoops, it hasn't saved it. Okay. Now it's updated with that invert. So in that, uh, let me put that back. 
Oh, there goes Photoshop back to install again. Okay, so you can see you can drag straight into Photoshop and edit your image um, without having to use this retouch option there. Um, and um, you leave the basic retouches, do those inside the darkroom retouching tool. Uh, but yeah, if you have a little bit faster computer, that invert shouldn't take as long. Um, the next on my list is green screen. Let's see how good a job I did here. So I am going to add a green screen border. I used the B key on my keyboard to um, bring up my border chooser. It's the same as clicking right here. Um, and all your shortcut keys are right next to it. So if you ever forget, um, but B is for borders, T is for text. I'll pull up text right there, type it in. And I'll probably drop it somewhere real small, but so um, those are two little keyboard shortcuts that are real helpful. Um, but let's go back to our green screen border. I'm going to use that one. So you can see that where the floor mat met the backdrop, I have a little bit of stuff going on, but for, um, I'm not sure what this stuff is called. I'm going to say, uh, some see-through material on the dress. Um, it actually did a pretty good job. You can still see what you would have seen it if you were shooting on that background. So it knocked out only the green um, and still caught the fabric. But right here, this is uh, me just doing a sloppy job whenever I set up. So I am going to click on dropout and use my little guy right here and have it set to dropout. And just brush that stuff away, save retouches. And I could have done a little better job right there, but you can see that um, how um, it went through and just kind of cleaned up my sloppy job. Um, and let's see. Um, uh, just a couple quick little um, suggestions. There are a whole bunch of hidden uh, options that if you right click on, you can find additional options. Um, and I also have the keyboard shortcut um, list at uh, darkroomsupport.com and type in keyboard shortcuts. There's uh, pages full of shortcuts. But uh, like if you right click on sepia, let's turn this off. Um, you can click on sepia and apply the sepia, but if this is just a little bit too orangish or too saturated, you can, let's say, change that to 20 and then 15, whoops, 14. You can see how it's adjusting the saturation and the hue. So you can get your sepia image just right where the other one might be a little bit too, too, too sepia for a lot of users. But I just wanted to show you that there are a lot of little options. If you right click, you get additional things. Um, how are we doing on questions? Uh, let's see. Is everything going, still going good for everybody? Wally, are you still there? Oh, 
Okay. Well, I'm going to continue on. If you have any questions or if I'm moving too fast or anything like that, let me know um, and we'll keep trucking. Uh, now we're getting into the actual fun stuff. That was just kind of basic learning how to use the software. This is like taking advantage of the power of the software. We're going to start with packages and um, we're doing pretty good on time. Um, we're going to go to our setup tab and I, uh, we have these basic packages and if you want to just add something to it, you can, you just add a package, but I typically will start a brand new group uh, with only the things that I print because I might print it eight by 10 or two five by sevens, but I, I like to do them my own special way. Um, and I'll give you an example. Um, so we're going to do new group, my pack. Okay. And I'm going to show the add uh, local print items. You can also do uh, lab um, print items. Like I have a, a, a really great lab right down the street from, uh, from me where I am in San Antonio. And uh, I will send them, you know, stuff that I can't print. They have a whole bunch more thing, a whole bunch they can do that I cannot. So if I need a, a mug or a metal print, I'll send it to the lab. So that's where that lab uh, print option comes in really handy. Um, or if your printer goes down, you, they can help you out. So um, I'm going to just leave it for local print items right now. Um, first thing I'm going to do is add just a basic four by six. Um, so we're going to double click on this, change that to four by six. And um, one option I really like to use is this quick print option. Rather than send it to the cart, it will send it straight to the printer. So if I take a picture and it's good to print, all I have to do is click um, the number one. So I'm going to just call it quick so we know that's a quick print. Um, and saying that I don't have a cost. If I were using receipts, that would be important to add a cost, but not right now. Oh, oops. We'll disable that warning. Now, now that I've created a, created a package name with a price, I'm going to select the actual print item. And the way I kind of like to think of this is that this could be called whatever you want. It could be package A, and package A might have a single 8x10 in it, or it might have an 8x10, two 5x7s, eight wallets, and an 11 by 14 um, this is just a name or a container for your actual prints. So you call this whatever you want to call it. Um, that's just for you. One thing I will see a lot of people do is they'll name their package group four by six and then add a four by six print. Um, that is, that means you have to change your package group every time you want to print a different size. So uh, your package group holds your packages and your packages are the containers for the print items. So um, it looks like I did not add this right. Let's try that again, see what I did wrong. Make sure it's set to one and then we have a little box and we know that's now added. So we're going to do that one more time with a five by seven. Quick print. If you want it to go to the shopping cart, then you would not check this option. It'll save it to the shopping cart. And where that's helpful is if you have, uh, let's say a kid and he's ordering five by sevens, his trader cards and the t-shirt, um, then you would want that to all go into one order. And the order contains multiple things versus this is going to create an order for every print. So a little bit made more for the setup is more for event photography like shoot and print quickly. So select my five by sevens. Um, and I forgot to add quick, so I'm gonna just double click on that and update that. And once again, this naming does not affect what comes out. It's just so I know that that's a quick print. I'm gonna add another 
five by seven, but this is gonna be a, a combo. And it's not gonna be a quick print. Okay, um, five by seven wallet combo. So there are two different ways that you can do this. You can set up a single five by seven right there, and then um, and then your four wallets here, and that would come out. And that's good if you're using a five by seven printer. So you can see there's a number one next to each one of those, and uh, or another option we have and this does the same thing but let's say you're using an 8x10 printer you go to 8x10 oops combination and that would give you the exact same thing the difference is it's on one sheet so it's a full unit versus two half units um, the uh, next on my list is, let's say you're four by six, you're doing an event, um, we'll, we'll make another package that does something very similar, but four by six and save. So just a, a small, a small variations on the packages that you can see that it's just a container for whatever you want it to, whatever output. So um, we'll do our four by six, and then add local print item, go to digital delivery, and let's say create a new folder right here. Hopefully that's called save. Yep, okay. Um, and do digital media. And we're gonna output a full resolution image. So what will happen automatically whenever we print this, um, this four by six, it will automatically save a four by six to this folder. So we always already have a, um, a backup of each image. And where this becomes really helpful is if you're applying a template and you're doing edits, you have a saved version of that image as a backup. If you ever need to go back to it, you don't have to search your orders. You can just go to that image uh, and save, uh, open it and reprint it from the folder just to make sure they get exactly the same thing they did the first time. And then we're going to do one more. And um, so quick print, oh, I'll just call it a fun package. So, and when this, um, what is today? Five, 25. Um, what's going to happen here is let's do a, um, Not trying to make any do anything too extreme, but uh, we'll just select this template. So, what's going to happen is every time I click on this package, it's going to upload to Event Gallery and um, apply that template. 
So I wish I uh, had added a, uh, a little bit cooler template, but that's just the basic one. We're gonna get into templates in just a second and we'll kind of revisit this in a different method. Um, but let's switch to our photo workshop. I can now select this image. I wanna change my default group to my packages. So um, if I had a printer, which uh, technically it is, uh, I have a virtual printer, let's see what happens. I clicked on that, you can see it's printing. It didn't, uh, um, it bypassed everything um, and went straight to my printer and it's a virtual printer, so there it goes. Um, but that would have typically gone to a hard copy. Um, so you can see that is a quick print. That was a little checkbox earlier. All I have to do is uh, click this package or I can tap the number one and it sends it to the printer. Um, and that's what those numbers all, they could correspond with the numbers on your keyboard. So if you're using like 10 key, you can uh, just click on the number five, you take a picture, tap the number five, whenever the image is ready to print. So we'll go ahead and uh, try that. Let's see if that's working, it's processing. And that fun package, it was a template that uploads to Event Gallery. Now, um, I, I did just reset my computer and I haven't tested Event Gallery, so fingers crossed that it actually sends it. Um, because this is my support computer that I tinker with all the time. But um, it looks like it's trying. Um, but so if we go to um, the four by six and save, let's see what happens there. Um, Another uh, cool little trick, um, if you're using a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can use that to zoom in. If you hold down shift, it'll go in half increments. If you hold down control, it'll go really fast. So, and then you, you can always just click on the little center square to reset everything back the way it originally was. So four by six and save. It says it's done. Here's here's the what would have been a print, and let's look at that folder, and you can actually see back there that's already updated. So, um, and it looks like this guy is not going where it's supposed to, but um, it looks I'm probably not logged into Event Gallery right now. Um, So um, right here is where, oh yeah, that would be BY. Um, hmm. So you guys might notice I have something there that shouldn't necessarily be uh, be there. Uh, Remove.bg, it's, uh, I believe it's coming in 9.3 and it's gonna give me a little chance to uh, uh, go over uh, things that I think are important coming up. Um, I am currently running um, 9.22405. Uh, if you are on an older build, you'll notice that Dropbox doesn't work. So a lot of people are running into it now that they're, the, uh, they're getting back to work um, and having problems with Dropbox connecting. You want to be on the latest build of Darkroom Core 9.2. Um, so 9.3 is coming out. I've actually been out of the office for the last few days, but best of my knowledge, the first, uh, should be available at first of June. Um, if you are not on 9.2, you're on, let's say 9.1, now's the time to upgrade because then you would get that upgrade to 9.3, um, as well. But 9.3 is coming out 
very soon. And that's where uh, remove.bg comes in. And that is used to remove backgrounds without having a green screen. So should not have been in here. Um, I apologize, you guys shouldn't have seen it, but you got a sneak peek. Um, oh, yeah, and that's why event gallery didn't post because I'm not actually logged into it. We'll save event gallery for another time, but that would have gone up to, I'll show you. To uh, here is from darkroom core going up to the event gallery. Um, so a very cool um, service to share your images from your events. If you haven't checked out, you definitely should. Um, before we get into templates, do we have any questions? Is everything going okay still? I haven't heard from anybody, so there's always a possibility I'm talking to myself. And it's also possible, this is my first time actually using this, this, this system. You guys might be asking questions and I'm not paying attention. I apologize if that's what's going on. But very possible that it's a user error on this side. Um, okay, we are going to continue on um, and set up a template. So um, just like I like to create my own temp, uh, package group, I do the same thing. Um, my templates And there is um, a, a good way to um, organize your templates. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you the right way, even though it's a little few extra steps. There's a really good reason for this. Um, so um, I recommend creating templates and saving them in the, your X drive under templates and then borders. Make sure you copy all of your graphics to that, fol to that folder. And I'm uh, duplicating the name so it matches up. Um, so these are the files that we're gonna be working with today. Okay. So I just duplicated them into this folder. The reason why we want to add it to the X drive is whenever your computer, um, you outgrow your computer, that you need more space, faster computer or whatever. All you have to do is copy that photos folder or what becomes the X drive to the new computer that has all your packages, has all your photos, and it should have all of your templates. You can save your templates anywhere, your graphics, but if you were to do that, then you have to move those templates and those graphics from that other, wherever you saved them, whether it's on your network drive or on your desktop. Um, the other issue you run into is if I were to add them from my desktop um, and then I rename a folder, then I'm missing files. Darkroom can't find them because essentially you just changed the street name on your address and now the mailman can't find out where you live because you you just changed the, uh, the address and um, without letting Darkroom know. So always save it to your X drive. Try to stay out of your X drive whenever you're um, in, in your computer Try not to delete things, move things within the X drive. I know it's kind of goes against what a lot of people like to do uh, to stay organized, but Darkroom has its own organization in there and um, you can do some damage if you move things in there, but your templates, save them to your 
templates folder. So let's uh, create a new, we're gonna go with a five by seven template. So I'm just choosing the size. Uh, come on, there you go. Okay, five by seven. The description is going to become the file name, so I want to be descriptive. Um, what is this? Um, okay. So background color in this case is not important because I'm gonna put a graphic right on top of it and use photo orientation. Most of this is pretty good just as is. Um, we're gonna click add graphic. You can see this is on my desktop, so I don't wanna add it from this folder. I want to go to X templates borders, my templates. Okay, that's where I just said it. Okay, so this is my background graphic. Um, I am going to add a photo, just a normal photo right on top of it. It's gonna cover the whole thing. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so I get a cool little border and then move that guy up because I'm gonna add a overlay graphic. And we're just kind of starting out real simple. Um, I know a lot of people are going to ask, why wouldn't you just add that text using the text option? Um, and there, there's a couple reasons that Photoshop has some really cool effects that you can do with text that Darkroom just cannot um, achieve. Let's say like a, a, the arch, that's a really cool one that Photoshop has. But I also added a little graphic that was halfway transparent. So I could have, uh, I built this in Photoshop. I could have built it as three different objects in Darkroom, um, but that is going to be the next template. Um, it just takes a few more steps. I want to keep it simple. Okay. Um, let's see. We're going to and a little frame around it. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, and then I accidentally clicked right here and I shifted, it's kind of hard to see, um, but you can see that every time I click, I'm moving it, nudging it just a little bit. So I'm gonna select that and go to center and center so it fixes that. And then I'm going to select this or the, the photo object and uh, center horizontally. So I know everything's centered the way it should be. Save as a new border and you can see the description is now the file name and it's saving where it should save. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And test it out and see what it looks like. So we're gonna switch over to Sports. Um, these sample images are really good for testing. A lot of times people run into an issue and I'll, I'll say, hey, how does it work with the sample images? And those work fine. And that gives you an idea, hey, maybe their issue is with my images. And usually it is uh, that they've imported raw images or captured raw images. Um, but these are always real helpful to diagnose problems. So. There's our uh, five by seven template. We have our five by seven wallet combo. We click that. This uh, five by seven in a wallet are the same ratio. Um, that's why I actually use that size. Um, and so this will print out. I have my little wallets and my five by seven. We'll go ahead and save the order. Er, I should, I should have placed it. Let's do that. So you can see what it looks like. So this is the non-quick print version. Um, here is uh, what would have printed out one five by seven and four wallets on an eight by 10. 
Um, and actually, it printed out an eight, eight and a half by eleven because that's set up for eight and a half by eleven. But um, most people would use a eight, eight by ten printer. Um, next up, so this is for um, adding just a simple border. The next border is going to be. Um, oh, well, I'll just I'll just kind of rather than walk you through it because we're running out of time. Um, let's say it's eight by 10 border. Anybody that's printed two five by sevens on an eight by 10 know that uh, you usually end up with two lines on one side. So that means you have to cut off two sides with, uh, you can add um, that should be a five by seven. Rather than putting it right in the middle, copy paste. You can make a template like this. So it's just a single cut on one side, just a small suggestion. But then you can use this whole area for advertising your company and how to do reprints and hopefully get a little bit more money on reprints. Um, the I'm gonna switch over. I built this template earlier. I'm gonna just let you see kind of how it's made because we are uh, kind of running out of time here. Um, so um, this has it. Uh, I double click on this. This is a graphic that you can't see, but it has another hidden one. Let's. Um, Sports. Okay, there's going to be a couple things that load when we do this. Hmm. Oh, because she's not green screen. We'll use Penny's pictures. Okay, let's try that again. B. Okay, so green screen image. Um, what we can do, and it's funny because this color is actually pretty close, but I'm gonna change it to green just so you can see what would happen if it was not the right color. Um, we can use this little eyedropper right here and sample a color from her, uh, her outfit and have it match specifically that color. This is great for uh, teams. Um, uh, sports so you can sample their uniform and have something unique to them um, if I click the T tool oh come on okay so one other thing that this has in here that you actually can't see right now it has a um, hidden overlay. I should have tested this a little bit better last time. Sorry, I run that time on this one. But uh, so you can have a graphic list. Let's say I want to change out that graphic behind it. It can be from multiple different graphics. Um, let's see, do I have any other colors? So let's look at that, the color and see why the text is not popping up. Okay, we'll make this easy on ourselves. Remove those and the graphic list. Set the alpha channel. Okay, so um, 
that it had percents around it that should pop up text. Um, and then this one was not set to alpha channel, it was set as a flat graphic. So that's why those didn't um, didn't work. And that I'll, uh, in a future video, I will show you how to make that template from start to scratch. Um, okay. So obviously Penny is not a senior. She's graduating kindergarten this week. Um, so we can rem turn off and on that. So let's say you had varsity, um, junior varsity. These are all different things that you can add as a graphic and toggle through. Um, the, um, you can add a player number. Um, Penny. Okay, so, um, and those are all editable text inside of Darkroom. Right here, looks like I have to expand that text box. That's something you'll probably run into. So let's see if we can fix that. We'll just drag that down just a little bit so it has a little bit more breathing room. So, um, but the, the main cool thing about this is this right here that this color, um, let's see if we can move that out of the way so you can see what's going on. It's just a color effect over a graphic. Um, when we double click on it, you can see that it is set to um, allow the user to change the color. So if we uh, switch back and actually this name is also set to, oops, it's not, but as long as these names match, then when you update one, it should update all that match that name. So if we change it to, let's try green. You can see the background changes and also the text and the outline around this number has changed as well. Um, So that is um, that. I think we're going to save. I will do a special class, uh, Darkroom Core for Photo Booth users, and where we go over the. Um, I want to show you how to do a quick print or a, a auto print with a strip. So you take four images and it automatically prints out a strip, just like a photo booth would, but it. Uh, um, it's manually captured. So that will be, uh, that's one thing we missed. Um, and then uh, the event or the virtual party, I mentioned this earlier. Um, what this was originally used for um, was not for, we didn't know a pandemic was coming. Um, we, what we uh, used it for was people could take pictures at a party and then text them to an, uh, a phone or to a core edition and it would print. So they were their own photographers. They would just send it. And originally it worked with Instagram. And one of my favorite things that I saw was that they are trying to raise money for uh, a village in Africa. And they had, they just had the kids take pictures and send it and the images printed at, at like a banquet where they're trying to raise money. So that was um, pretty neat uh, using what technology we have to help make the world a better place. Um, but yeah, you, you don't have to um, take the image and just send back, back a template. You can actually do a print and use it at a, at a party now that we can go to parties again. So um, that is, uh, kind of neat and we'll go over that in a future one. I'll be sure to add that to the knowledge base. Um, most of everything we went over today is on darkroomsupport.com and you can do a keyword search for uh, most uh, most of the topics just like um, earlier um, like 
Dropbox. You just search Dropbox. I'm having a problem with Dropbox. Search Dropbox at darkroomsupport.com and uh, it would have told, told you, hey, here's the fix for that. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, I still see we have people here, so I'm, I might be just really entertaining and very thorough, but I doubt that. Um, why, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, you had questions and, and I just never got, got them, or maybe Wally took care of it. Um, if you, uh, we have a question. Uh, do you, <clears throat> Eugene, do you want to answer that question uh, out loud, or just you want me to yeah. type it in? No, 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 no. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. This is this is uh, this is a good one. So, what's the difference between core and assembly? Um, core and assembly are they have assembly has everything core has, but there's one thing that you're missing in the middle, which would be Darkroom Pro. Um, so, Pro is the networking version of core you can use core as your uh, client and then uh, pro as your server um, assembly has all those features and it uses pro as a, uh, a client or a um, you can also use a field station but it can um, use data so assembly is made specifically for people working with a uh, a csv file from a school or a, a league I know those can be kind of hard to come by with uh, privacy, but you essentially take a, a whole school roster, import it into uh, assembly, and then when you, on picture day you go, you ask the kid who they are. They typically will have like a barcode that they scan. And then when you capture that, it instantly associates the um, data, the kid's name, ID number, class, and puts in the, in order there and then it allows them to output um, like a PSPA CD for uh, yearbook. So you have to have that data as a backbone. That's where Darkroom assembly comes in. And, um, but um, if you want more information about that desktop, Darkroom actually handles the sales and support, but Pro would be the updated version to core and it primarily is meant for networking. It allows you to print some bigger printer to some larger printers like you would see at a uh, Pro Photo Lab. Um, and there are a couple other little little things in there. Like uh, one thing I really like is the raster printer. And I have documentations on uh, for differences between Core and Pro at Darkroom support as well. Um, the recent updates to Pro have a database feature. Currently, I do not believe that has been added. It has been talked about, um, but yeah, that that is Darkroom Assembly comes with a whole bunch of support. Um, it's necessary to have that the extra support, so I think Desktop Darkroom charges for it, I believe. Um, but it is a, quite a bit more complicated. So if we were to add it to Pro, um, then it, it's not just a, a straight upgrade. There is some hand holding that's needed. Can you show me the green screen setup? Um, um, green screen, like how to set up a green screen template that the easiest way is uh, I can create a template real quick. Um, new, make it eight by 10. Add, well, first we'll add a graphic. The difference between green screen and uh, um, non-green screen would be this checkbox right here. So if you see a gray box and it's not set up for uh, to be shot with a green screen image, um, you can see that's without transparency and with. So it's just that checkbox. That's how you would add green screen. I hope that answers the question. Do we have any others? And 
have there any any specific questions that you want answered? Um, like I said, I'm right in the middle of moving, but we we've actually uh, can core be used for booth. Can core be used for a photo booth? Um, it, does not have the automation that Darkroom Booth has. It can be used for a manual photo booth. So a photographer that takes an image and it prints out in a strip, yes. But there's no um, screen templates that you can use in Core for the automation where you start a session and it just takes uh, images. Can you use other colors? Uh, you can use blue, chroma key blue, and you can use chroma key green for green screen. And 9.3, uh, we're working on adding um, remove.bg. So it uses AI to remove the background. Um, so that's coming real soon. But in the future, the answer would be yes. Currently, um, it's not possible. It has to be chroma key blue or green. These are all good questions. Thanks, guys. But yeah, if you have any questions uh, that, or you want to see a specific setup, how to do something, email support. And I'll, um, what I'll do is I'll start putting together a list and uh, I'll make get back to making those short videos. I've been in transit and I'm actually in a temporary house right now set up. But uh, we, uh, we're moving in. We get internet today. So uh, I'll start getting back to my normal YouTube quick little videos um, coming up. So send the questions and say, hey, can you make a video for this? And I will do my best to get as many out as quickly as possible. Additional updates uh, to assembly. Um, I, I don't, that one, I can't really answer because we really don't work with assembly. Um, we, uh, we make it, but we don't handle the sales and support for assembly. It's all desktop darkroom. Um, I think it, uh, so I can't answer that question. I would, I would email sales at darkroomsoftware.com and they might be able to answer a little bit more eloquently. Okay. Um, if you run any other questions, send us an email. We're happy to help. Uh, we're standing by. Um, but it's great having you guys. And I think we're going to keep doing these. And um, But yeah, next one, I I'll try to do a darkroom core for photo booth use to for booth stuff. We'll continue on with some of these other things, maybe more advanced. Um, but uh, I'll close it there. Thanks, everybody, for attending. And... I will see you next time.